Hi, my name is Jamie Francis. Thanks for checking out this video. This is kind of going to be a spin-off from my color grade tutorial. How to color grade kind of like more of a woodsy, darker woodsy scene. What we're going to do is just go file new. We'll just make a new project. And we're going to import. Right click import a file. And it's 30 frames a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to make this 24 frames a second a little more cinematic. Um, so I am just before I even plug it into my uh, timeline, I'm just going to click on it and you right click and I'm going to interpret the footage to 24 frames a second. I'm just going to go solid 24 frames a second and then I'm going to press OK. So now this shot is going to be slowed down quite a bit, uh, not quite a bit, it's about 80% of the original 30 frames a second shot. Um, but it gives it a little bit of kind of a, just a subtle smoothness extra smoothness from the original shot and I haven't even shown you the original shot here so we'll plug, I just dragged it into the timeline here and this um, this shot is actually um, I usually shoot with the especially with the GH4 I shoot um, very flat um, everything basically set at minus five I believe it's called cinema cinema D cinema D or V um, something like that, but I actually tr um, I actually tried a different format with this one. So everything's, I believe, set at like minus three or something. I can get the specific settings, um, but uh, it's on my camera and I don't have it on me right this second. But I, I'll write it down maybe in the description. So my first thing I'm going to do is I just, well, I first made this quick little cut here. But I'm going to click on here and I'm actually gonna, we're going to do a quick little warp stabilize. Type in warp stabilize. And I'm going to click and drag that onto the footage. And that's just going to automatically analyze. I do have a tutorial, a quick tutorial on how to use, um, how I use Warp Stabilize. Quick little run down here. Um, we want a smooth motion. Kind of comes from um, like a left to right kind of down shot. And so I'm going to, I usually use position scale rotation. And I'm, instead of 50, I'm going to just set it at 25%. These are just kind of ballpark numbers that I kind of put in all the time. Um, I'm going to preserve the scale because I don't want it to kind of warp stabilize. It seems to like to kind of scale the image, um, zoom in and out if you don't click that. And then instead of stabilize crop auto scale, which is the default, I'm just going to go stabilize only. So these are kind of like the defaults that I use. I'm going to create a new um, composition with this with this um, the stabilized footage and so it in the background it's still going but I'm, I actually have a comp here that this is where my footage is but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna I love doing this and um, this is just an optional option but you I'm gonna change the composition instead of 69 kind of nice and wide this kind of the the original shot I'm actually gonna change it to a very wide 2.35 um, to one composition just because I, I, I really like the look um, I know it's it's kind of faking a, uh, a true 2.35 to one ratio cinematic ratio but I don't care you don't have to do that it's optional I just click right, uh, put Chris, click enter here on the comp, and I'm going to change the name to just Woods. Press enter, and then you got your name. So I went to Shutterstock and got this um, cool image here. Um, I love the color in it, it's nice and dark and kind of moody. I downloaded that, and we're going to use this image um, for the color in our, our shot. Um, but before we do that, our image has been stabilized, and let's just see how how it looks right now. This is the full frame shot again. And what you things you can do is is you can actually go into the store stabilize, and now. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower this. I'm going to make it about 18% instead of 25. And I'm actually going to bring down... There's a little box here. 
I'm gonna take it off. It's show track points. And this is kind of something I've got into lately. If you click this, a bunch of dots will show up. And basically you want to use the the track points that you you want to base your stabilize around. So obviously you don't want your stabilization to have anything to do with this giant tree that's in front of your shot because it's it's trying to um, balance the whole it's trying to stabilize the whole shot and once this this tree comes in it gets confused it doesn't know what it, it what this object is so they trying to they're trying to stabilize that as well as the background so what I'm gonna do is again I'm gonna just I'm gonna click on the track points and I'm just gonna select the stuff that I do not want it to use for stabilizing and I'm gonna delete all these tracks so I just selected them all and press delete and then it, you sort of have to go through this kind of one by one frame by frame almost uh, until these dots sort of go away for good it's a little tedious but it definitely helps you're shot out. Anyway, I think that'll work. And then, so what you want to do is you want to turn these off and it'll, it'll correct itself. And then we'll just see how this looks now. It should be a lot better. Um, because the shot's stabilizing, it you're going to have the shifting and that's why you have these black um, borders kind of floating around. Um, what you can do is just add additional scale. Instead of 100, you can go 101 or 102. You can go 102. Actually, just go and then it should stay, it basically just zooming in the footage ever so slightly. There's a little bit of black up on the top there, but that's not gonna matter. There is a cool technique you can do here is, I'm gonna again, go into my comp, composition, my woods composition, and I am going to now, I'm gonna, because it kind of goes, the shot just as it is, goes from the kind of higher up and kind of goes low. I'm gonna kind of accentuate this because we've, we're, I'm cropping it, cropping the image. I can kind of get away with doing this technique. So what I'm gonna do is, this is kind of just something I do sometimes. Um, I click position, click the, the, the keyframe on position. Actually, oh, I'll go back, back up here. I click on the, the my original raw file. I go to transform open this up and then I click the keyframe of position and I'm going to actually move this shot down this black border will be will be cropped see if I click back into my composition see it's still fine because I'm not going too far but I'm gonna go about there and then I'm at the end of my shot I'm going to go all the way to the end, and I'm actually going to bring it all, back, all the way back up. Again, to probably about, I don't know, let's just say there, just, just arbitrary. And instead of just having a, a complete linear keyframe, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to keyframe assistant, and I'm just going to click ease, ease. It just kind of slowly um, makes the move, and then it really slows down at the end and kind of makes it nice and smooth. Nice and, it looks really neat. It's looking okay. It's not a perfect shot. Earlier I downloaded a Shutterstock image. And I imported the the image and it's, I'm just gonna show it here. I, I've imported it and I'm just gonna show it to you guys. So this is the color that I kind of, I, I chose. I, I really, I sort of, I don't know, just something about this color. I, I wanted something that's t completely different than the actual original um, exposed shot um, and see what we can do with it. You can see here, it's like, it's a lot, it's a lot more brighter, a lot more greens, where my shot's pretty flat and kind of, kind of got this bluey kind of hue to it. Uh, the white balance actually is a little bit off. Um, I had it a little too, a little too cold um, for my liking. This is my image here I'm gonna steal. And I'm gonna put it right up on top here. So basically, you're just you're you're using this as a guide for your, all your color work. So let's start color grading. I I like to use adjustment layers um, and curves. I use I use curves and levels a lot. 
Um, so I go new to Smit Layer. And, and I'm going to make sure this is not on top of... Keep your image that you're going to be using as a guide, which is this. Which is my guide color. And I'm going to keep that on top so it doesn't change the grade as I grade my footage. So keep all your grade and your, your stuff below and just keep your guide color image on top. So my first thing I'm going to do is this right here, my RGB show channel and color management settings on my image, or, uh, on my footage. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to click red. And so in my adjustment layer, I am going to add a curves adjustment layer, curves effect. So I type in curves on my effects and drag in curves. And I click that right onto my adjustment layer. So now I have it all set up here in the corner here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I click red on here on my channel settings, red, I'm going to click red on here on my footage. So now this is the red information for my shot. And this is the red information for my shot that I'm guiding with. So I'm just going to try to match it as best as possible. Now this is just, again, just, it's just eyeballing and I'm no expert, but I really like this system. I can see my image here is very, it's pretty contrasty, especially with the red information. There's um, quite, quite a high highlights, but very deep blacks too, a lot deeper and than my uh, shot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the blacks, pull it over a bit to just sort of match that. And my highlights are pretty good. I'm just going to bring it a little bit. Uh, actually, I might just leave it. Maybe just actually bring it down even more. Um, yeah, I sort of like that. And this is, again, this is just kind of fumbling around. So I'm done with red. And I'm going to go to green now. And click green. Make sure you click green on your curves so you don't mess up your early stuff, early work. And now see, you can see my shot is a lot brighter in the greens overall. So I'm going to really bring this down. Shift this over a bit. Shift the blacks over. That looks decent. And then now I'm going to go to blue. Click over blue on your curves. Oh, and it's really dark in the blue. Um, not a lot of information, actually. So I'm going to really bring this down. I like making noises as I do this. And I'm even going to bring that ever so slightly down. This might be a little too dark. And now you can go to RGB. And that's, this is what it, your shot looks like right now. It, it looks pretty good. It's sort of matching with this. It's, it's lost a little bit of, um, a little bit of brightness. It's, it's pretty dark overall. I'm going to turn off the guide color. Just, I just muted it. I'm just going to sort of see what this looks like. I like it. It's very moody and, and dark. So that's really just, that's all really all I do. I mean, our original shot is pretty flat, kind of got a little more popping. Um, there's a couple of other things you can do. Um, I'm going to add adjustment layer and I'm going to, I'm going to glow it up a little bit, make it a little bit more dreamlike. So I'm going to click glow and add a stylized glow in here, drag that in. Just gonna play around with it, play around with your glow. And I'm actually gonna change the blend to uh, soft light. And then I'm gonna change the opacity to make it not so extreme. There, that's not bad. 
And that's basically it. Um, I'm going to render this out and show you what it looks like. But um, that's basically your shot. And I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with this color grade um, setup. If you go back to what it originally looked like, I mean, it's kind of flat and boring. I hope this helped in any way. Um, make uh, Leave a comment for any comments or any suggestions for future tutorials or how-tos. I reply to every comment and I'm here to help.